So it's been a couple of months since the PSVR 2 launched, and despite some reports of slow sales, I've been having a great time with it. I'm still racing daily in Gran Turismo 7, I'm slowly working my way through Resident Evil Village, and I've even been revisiting some fun VR classics such as Moss. These games look amazing on the PSVR 2 as it's wired directly to the PS5, taking full advantage of the power of the console. Now personally, I don't mind being tethered to the console, but it got me thinking, what if there was a way to cut this cord? Wireless solutions do exist for some wired VR headsets. Just look at Nofio for the Valve Index, for example. Something like this might exist for the PSVR 2 in the future. But I have no time to wait for that, so I wanted to experiment by putting something together myself that could offer the same feeling of being wireless, but by making the PSVR 2 portable instead. So I ordered some supplies, gathered my headset, and headed off to a suitable location to put this crazy idea to the test. And I ended up here at Zero Latency at Wembley in London. They have this huge arena specifically designed for free roam, untethered VR. That's why they have this crazy pattern all over the floor and the walls, so headsets with inside out tracking have something to latch onto, making this the perfect location for my portable PSVR 2 experiment. Zero Latency have locations worldwide and offer a bunch of VR experiences, including a zombie outbreak and even a Far Cry experience that can be played with up to eight players, all playing in the same space at the same time. Each player is kitted out with an HP Backpack PC, paired with an HP Reverb G2 VR headset, and this epic custom-made blaster. So I took this zero latency concept and made my very own version using the PSVR 2. I crudely mounted my PS5 console to a backpack with one of the side panels removed for some added ventilation. I then used a right angle power connector and a USB-C extension cable to minimize any potential damage to the console's connections or the headset during the experiment. The key component to make all of this possible is this EcoFlow River 2 portable battery pack. This fits nicely inside the backpack and can provide up to 600 watts of power, which should be plenty to run both the PS5 and the PSVR 2 headset for over an hour. Now, I should stress at this point, please do not try this at home. You could very easily damage your console or your headset. So once I was in the arena, I scanned the environment and set up the boundary system and I fired up Gran Turismo 7. I jumped straight into the VR showroom where I was able to physically walk around this incredible Porsche 917. This is something I just couldn't do at home due to my limited play space. But here, I could freely move around the car to fully appreciate the lines, the light reflecting off the bodywork, and all these awesome little details. There were moments whilst walking around the car where I felt so immersed, I just wanted to reach out and touch it. Next up was Resident Evil Village, where again, I could physically walk around the environment. Reaching over to inspect this wooden replica of Mia on the table and ducking to avoid all the prosthetics hanging from the ceiling just amplified the creepy vibe of this scene even further. The added feeling of presence from physically walking around in VR is really not to be underestimated, as it does help to trick your brain into thinking that you're actually there. But one major problem that I faced was if I wanted to explore beyond this room, even though I had the physical space in the arena, is that I would hit the limitations of the PSVR 2's boundary system. And this would push me into the pass-through mode and out of the gaming experience, which of course immediately broke the illusion. Unfortunately, the biggest boundary you can create with the PSVR 2 is around 5 meters by 5 meters, and sadly, there's no way to disable it. But pushing on through, I jumped into one of my favorite VR shooters, Pavlov, just to see if playing freely in the arena would make the experience any better. And what I found was playing in this huge play space, I could move in and out of cover by physically stepping out of the corners to then take my shots and quickly duck back into cover without using the thumbsticks, which I think did give me a slight advantage. But this is when the experience peaked for me. I physically went prone and crawled across the arena floor to snipe enemies with my bolt action rifle. And while it probably made me an easy target, it was super fun and incredibly immersive. But just like my experience with Resident Evil 8, I kept accidentally moving outside the limits of the boundary into the pass-through mode. And this meant that I constantly had to adjust my position in the game, which was a real shame. 
And then finally, I jumped into the C Smash VRS demo, where I was able to line up the PSVR 2's boundary to perfectly match the size of the virtual arena in the game. And this meant that I could freely run across the virtual arena in total confidence to hit those returning shots without activating the pass-through mode. And this made it feel completely natural and allowed me to just lose myself in the experience. Despite the game looking very simple, this free roam experience actually turned out to be one of the most immersive experiences I tried all day. And by the time my battery was almost running out, I took the headset off and I was a happy, sweaty mess. So, in summary, my little experiment worked. I was able to replicate the feeling of being wireless by making the PSVR 2 completely portable. Would I recommend it to anyone? Absolutely not. But did I have a great time running around the arena with the PSVR 2 on? Most definitely. Of course, the biggest limitation is the PSVR 2's boundary system, which is limited to a maximum of 5x5 five five meters. But I'd love to know what you all think in the comments down below. I'm curious if you would like to try something like this, not that I would recommend it, or you'd be interested in a wireless PSVR 2 in the future. Thanks so much to Zero Latency for allowing us to use their location for this experiment. And if you've never tried full arena scale VR before, it's definitely worth checking out. I've provided a link to Zero Latency's website in the description down below. Leave a cheeky little like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe for all my future VR content. And as always, I'll see you all on the next one. <laughs> Cheers.